Hello again everyone, welcome back to Nathan. In this video, I want to show you how to implement the memory bank system in KiloCode so that it can maintain a deep understanding of your project across different sessions. AI coding assistants like KiloCode face a fundamental limitation, which is they reset and forget past conversations between sessions. This means when you start a new session, you either have to repeat explaining your project or the agent has to analyze your code base to regain context. The memory bank feature was created to solve this memory problem. It creates and maintains structured files to help the AI retain context across multiple sessions so you don't have to keep explaining things. With memory bank, a set of markdown files will be created and maintained to record important information about your project such as describing the project details, the system architecture, and the technology stack you used in the project. The memory bank can also be updated when specific milestones in your project is achieved, so it will always be up to date. In essence, memory bank will maintain five core files related to your project. The first is the brief.md file, which provides a high-level overview of what you're building. This file is created and maintained manually by the developers, and it will be used to initialize the other files. Next, there is the product.md file, explaining why the project exists, describes the problems being solved, outlines how the product should work, and user experience goals. After that, we have the context.md that shows current work focus and what to do next. And then we have the architecture.md file, which documents the system architecture, key technical decisions, design patterns, critical implementation paths, and so on. Finally, we have the tech.md file, which releases technologies and frameworks used, describes development setup, and tools configurations. When needed, the AI can also create additional files to organize other relevant information, such as complex feature documentation, integration specifications, API documentation, testing strategies, and deployment procedures. And that will be everything you need to know about Memory Bank. Next, let me show you how to create a memory bank for existing projects in Kilo Code. Now, let me show you how to get started. In VS Code here, I have a CRM dashboard front-end code used to track customers, deals, and pipelines for a SaaS company. We have several menus on the sidebar here, but some are still in progress, such as the deals page here. So let's initialize the memory bank files for this project. First, you need to create a folder in the project and call it .kilocode. And inside that folder, create another folder called rules and then the memory bank folder. This is where all memory bank files will be saved and maintained by KiloCode. After that, create a new markdown file called brief.md where a brief of the project will be stored. You need to put your project brief on this file. For example, I can write a CRM dashboard for an project developed using React and Tailwind CSS. But then again, writing all of the details will take some time, and if you don't know what to write, then you can simply ask KiloCode to help you out. First, add the brief.md file as context in the chat box, and then write a prompt that asks the agent to provide a concise and comprehensive description of the project. Highlight its main objectives, key features, make sure that this description stays brief and short. Next, activate the architect mode from KiloCode, and make sure you're using the best available AI model. Don't use lightweight models for the brief and memory bank generation. For this demo, I will use Gemini 2.5 Pro. Okay, press enter and let KiloCode work on the project brief. It will probably ask us to read a bunch of files from your project to get the idea of what this project is all about. This will take a while, so let me skip a bit to when it's finished. Okay, so now the project brief has been generated successfully, you can see the brief.md file on the screen. The project brief here is filled with the project description, objective, key features, and so on. You can also update this file if you feel it's needed. Uh, for example, I will add a short current state here. Uh, currently, it's in progress to develop all pages and features. Alright, now that the brief is generated, the next step is to initialize the memory bank. First, in the rules folder, create a new markdown file named memory bank rules. And then in this file, you need to put the killer code instructions for generating and maintaining the files. This rule can be found on killer code documentation page right here. So just copy this markdown text and then paste it into the file. Save this file and next, start a new killer code chat session. Here, just write initialize memory bank as the prompt. Again, you need to use the most advanced models such as Gemini 2.5 Pro and then just press enter. 
Now, Killer Code will start working to generate the memory bank or files. It will take a while as Killer Code will analyze the code base in details, so let's skip ahead to when this generation is finished. Okay, so now the memory bank files are generated, let's review them for a bit to make sure they are aligned with the project requirements. Uh, let's close the chat window again for a moment. And here we have the system architecture describing the system used for this project. And then we have the context file for the current state and the next steps to take. Then we have the product overview showing the key features and user experience goals. And finally, we have the technical overview describing the key technologies, libraries, environment, and scripts that can be executed on this project. So these are the core memory bank files, and every time you start a new chat session from this point, Kilo Code will use these files to get the context of your project and update it as your project grows. Here it asks us to switch to code mode to start implementing the features, but we're not going to do that. Instead, let's start a new chat and then ask Kilo Code to develop the deals page for this project. Users should be able to view, create, update, and delete deals data. Use existing components and styles as much as possible. Now, I will change the model as well to something more lightweight, such as Cloud for Sunnet for this test. Send this prompt in. And then look over here. Now we have this memory bank activated notice from Kilo Code showing that the agent now uses the memory bank files to fetch project context. It costs about six cents to send the entire memory bank documentation to the AI. And after a while, it will start working on the feature we requested and proceed as usual. Now I will skip again to when all of the tests are finished. And here the deal page is finally completed. Uh, Killer Code provides us with a brief of what it did. And we can also see the changes in the editor here. And then we can test it directly on the browser. Here's the deals page. We can create new deals as well as few existing deals over here. And then we can edit this data if we want to. And we can also delete the deal over here. Now the memory bank will automatically be updated when you have significant changes, but for this test, Helicode thinks it doesn't need to update yet. But yeah, that's how you can initialize and use the memory bank feature in Kilo Code. This feature allows you to create and store important details for your project so that Kilo Code can work more efficiently, instantly understanding project contacts and technologies. Will this increase token usage and cost more money? Well, using memory bank does increase token usage as the AI loads all memory bank files at the beginning. But because of the context provided by memory bank, the AI coding agent will have consistent understanding of your project, making it more productive and have less errors. This increased productivity may decrease your overall interactions and usage of AI to achieve the desired outcome, which means memory bank has the potential to save you money in the long run. And if we go back to Kilo code here, you can see that loading all the memory bank files using Cloud for Sonnet costs us about 6 cents. So for the cost of 6 cents, you can load all the relevant informations on your project and make Kilo code far more effective. In my humble opinion, it's a very good trade-off and I will gladly take it. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. So what do you think about this memory bank implementation in Kilo code? I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.